Good afternoon everyone. Our talk today is about non-anemic iron deficiency or iron deficiency without anemia. Do you know that iron deficiency anemia affects more than 1.2 billion individuals worldwide and that non-anemic iron deficiency or iron deficiency without anemia is two to three times as common as iron deficiency anemia. That's around two to three billion people worldwide have non-anemic iron deficiency. Non-anemic iron deficiency has been associated with a variety of symptoms including weakness, fatigue, reduced exercise tolerance, difficulty in concentrating, poor work productivity, muscle and joint pain, and new cognitive dysfunctions, among others. Iron deficiency anemia without anemia may be severe and the patients may with, with non-anemic iron deficiency anemia may have clinically significant profound and debilitating symptoms for many years that may often remain undiagnosed. The diagnosis of non-anemic iron deficiency is a clinically challenged. As symptoms are non-specific, hemoglobin is normal, the disease is often obscured by comorbidities, the disease is often overlooked and fold outside the scope of clinical suspicion usually. Many patients may be misdiagnosed with a myriad of conditions including hypothyroidism, depression, chronic fatigue syndrome, in addition to a lack of a well-defined evidence-based diagnostic criteria. Simply speaking, non-anemic iron deficiency is a very common clinical condition, yet under-recognized, under-diagnosed, and certainly under-treated. The key obje objective of my talk is to raise awareness of non-anemic iron deficiency and its diagnosis among clinicians in the medical community with a goal of reduction of the prevalence of the undiagnosed iron deficiency without anemia. The risk, factor for, the risk factors for non-anemic iron deficiency are the same as the risk factors for iron deficiency anemia. High risk group for non for non-anemic iron deficiency are preschool children, adolescents, women in the child-pairing period, elderly population, athletes, vegetarian, obese, etc. The etiology of non-anemic iron deficiency is the same as the etiology of iron deficiency anemia. The non-anemic iron deficiency passes into stages. The patients, those Two stage, these two stages, pre-latent and latent, are non-anemic iron deficiency, and this is the overt anemia. Patient may or may not progress to anemia. In the early stage of pre-latent iron deficiency, serum ferritin is low. In the latent, and symptoms may exist. In the latent iron deficiency, iron stores are markedly changing. Serum ferritin is reduced, depleted, saturation is decreased. Hemoglobin level is still normal. MCV and the MCH are reduced, and the symptoms may be common may be, and may be debilitating. Remember that a patient with a normal hemoglobin level and reduced MCV and MCH may be a case of latent iron deficiency. The clinical features of non anemic iron deficiency is based on the fact that iron is required for optimal mitochondrial function, essential for respiration and energy production. Symptoms include fatigue, difficulty in concentrating, poor work productivity, exercise intolerance, headache, dyspnea, palpitations, poor attention and memory, poor condition of the skin, nails and hairs, uh, developmental delay, restless leg syndrome, uh, sleep disturbances, joint pain, weight gain, headache. Uh, take care that non-anemic iron deficiency uh, may be an early sign of occult gastrointestinal malignancy in postmenopausal female and in men over 50 years. The British Society of Gastroenterology suggests that postmenopausal women and men more than 50 years with depleted iron stores or non-anemic iron deficiency require gastrointestinal investigation. Uh, iron deficiency in pregnancy, non-anemic iron deficiency in pregnancy may be associated with serious consequences, including increased frequency of prematurity, perinatal mortality, low birth weight, 
psychological, psychomotor developmental impairment and the cognitive dysfunction in infants and the preschool children. Uh, Preoperative non-anemic iron deficiency, not diagnosed and not managed in mas before major surgery, increases the risk of post-operative anemia, transfusion needs, and infection. Therefore, it's recommended that elective surgery with significant expected blood loss to be postponed until iron deficiency is corrected uh, to reduce the risk of post-operative anemia. There are several conditions and illnesses and with symptoms mimicking iron deficiency without anemia, including chronic fatigue, hypothyroidism, depression, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel, celiac disease, burnout, migraine, uh, profound vitamin D deficiency. Sometimes non-anemic iron deficiency is diagnosed, is misdiagnosed for any of these diseases. So laboratory diagnosis includes investigations to confirm the diagnosis of iron depletion or, or non-anemic iron deficiency and investigation to detect the underlying etiology. CBC is normal, hemoglobin is normal, MCV and MCH are low or normal, RDW increased, iron is low, TIBC is high, transfer saturation percentage is less than 20. The goal is standard test. In routine clinical practice for diagnosis of non-anemic iron deficiency is serum ferritin. A serum ferritin value less than 30 indicates non-anemic iron deficiency, whether chronic disease or is present or absent. A serum ferritin value less than 30, whether is indicative, is diagnostic of non-anemic iron deficiency, whether chronic disease is present or absent. Being a positive acute phase proteins, the threshold of ferritin for diagnosis of uh, non-anemic uh, non iron deficiency increases in the setting of inflammation, infection, cancer, etc. So a ferritin value less than, more than 30, but less than 100, is still indicative of non-anemic iron deficiency, even a ferritin value more than 100 and is indicative or suggestive of non-anemic iron deficiency in the setting of chronic disease if transference saturation percentage is less than 20. The treatment of non-anemic iron deficiency is similar to the treatment of iron deficiency anemia. This is algorithm or flow chart for patient with symptoms suggestive of iron deficiency, measure the hemoglobin level. If low, the patient is anemic, investigate for anemia. If normal, measure serum ferritin, this may be enough. Measure serum ferritin, saturation, and check if the patient has chronic disease. If there's five possibilities, if ferritin less than 30, or ferritin without, with or without chronic disease, or ferritin more than 30, but less than 100 with chronic disease, then the patient has iron deficiency without anemia. If ferritin is more than 100 nanogram per milli with chronic disease and transfer saturation less than 20, then the patient also has non-anemic iron deficiency. If ferritin is more than 100 with chronic disease but transfer saturation percent is more than 20, or ferritin is more than 30 without chronic disease, then the symptoms are not attributed to non-anemic iron deficiency. Consider as a diagnosis for the symptoms. If this is a fundamental message of this talk. In a patient presenting with unexplained, persistent, non-specific symptoms, please broaden your scope of the scope of your clinical suspicion to include or consider non-anemic iron deficiency, regardless of the primary underlying disease. Thank you.